been a lot. <laughs> it's been really isolating because having to learn something that nobody's learned before or having to know more about a particular thing than anybody knows means you have to get to a place where there's nobody you can talk to about it and it got very isolating very quickly. My, I had one set of friends early on say something about that I was always going on about it and so I shut up talking about it and and I haven't really had anybody to talk to apart from my supervisors and my um, son and my husband and my first research placement broke down very unexpectedly and I got another placement but I spent the whole time I was there just terrified that it would suddenly go as well and all the stress of that fear got to me mentally and then it had a physical effect um, and I spent a, a three months being tested for bowel cancer. My eyesight has been uh, broken by doing this and I've learned that we're made of jelly and you're only as strong as the people that hold you up. Um, so yeah, it's been a, it's been a, it's definitely been a journey. Yeah, I've been saying it's like a marathon, and either I will finish it or it will finish me. So I'm, I'm hoping that today is me finishing it. I really enjoyed it. The opportunity to read so deeply into a particular topic has just been a luxury. In life. I read a lot of research before taking up the doctorate as the sensory projects. I always tried to be a bridge between research and practice so I would read lots of research and then I would use that to inform the projects that I ran but I always considered it definitive and especially if I found a collection of papers that said similar things I would consider that those things were true, that they were right, that others were wrong, that they were fact, you know. I, I'm autistic and so that kind of binary thinking of sorting things into this is right, this is the thing to do and this is not the thing to do comes very naturally to me. And I felt that if I had a research basis for what I was doing that was a firm foundation and it was solid and proven and it, that sort of, I think because I come from a background of maths and physics, I always thought in terms of proof and I didn't fully appreciate how to evaluate qualitative work and I didn't fully appreciate qualitative work itself and this journey has taught me that research is a conversation, it's not a firm foundation, it's a shifting foundation it's not a fixed point, it's a movement forwards and where previously I might have written off a paper because of a sample size of just one person, you know, that the researcher is just looking at one person in my old quant's mind. Now I know to evaluate against different things so I'd be more likely to look at whether their theoretical framework was consistent with their methodological approach and I would be um, looking at the, the meaning in the paper and how it adds to the conversation that is being had all around. But my, my biggest learning, as I think my discussion chapter shows, is the insight from decolonising research and how dangerous that sort of binary thinking, categorising of things can be. And how risky certainty is my, you know, it was true because research said, I, when I went the papers that I've published, obviously I believe in what we wrote, but I know that five years down the line I will look back and think, 
well, I wish we hadn't said, you know, it quite like that, because these things are not fixed, they carry on moving. And I think I have been more aware of how the questions that we ask and how we frame those fix the answers that we'll find. And so it's not a fact, it's a perspective from a perspective. And being aware of where we stand is really key to that. So I'd say that overall, the journey has taught me the value of uncertainty and an understanding of research as a movement rather than as a concrete thing. And I hope I'll be a better bridge between research and practice in the future.